Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado, registered pharmacist number 12275. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls. We want to hear from you on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or longevity business or formulations or ingredients, if you want to get yourself off your prescription drugs or help wean someone else off their prescription drugs and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a success story you want to share or contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please head over to brightsideben.com. You can purchase products right off the website. You can also go to my blog, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and order products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team. Click on the Join the Team link at any of the websites, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. And if you want to purchase any of my Truth Treatment skin health products, including the Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Balm or Truth Serum made with up to 80%, 80, 80 percent premium lipophilic vitamin C, no preservatives, no fillers, no waxes, no oils, everything in my formulations, my skin health formulations are for you, not for me. So many times in the skincare business, in the skincare world, manufacturers of skincare products put things in the products not for you, but for them. The fillers, the waxes, the preservatives, the fragrances, all of those are to help them sell you more product. They don't have anything to do with the health of your tissue. And the truth treatment, in my truth treatment products, every ingredient is in the product for you and your skin. Every ingredient is active and functional. No preservatives, no nothing that your skin doesn't need or use. TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. All right, we're talking skin health, we're talking skin. We've been spending time talking about pigment or more exactly, hyperpigment, dark spots, which uh, can be sometimes significant and they appear on the skin surface. Not lipofusion, not the, the deeper stuff, the, not the uh, pigment that's a sign of cell debris and cell waste and the accumulation of, of cells, that uh, of cell wastes, if you will, that aren't getting drained away. That's lipofusion. We spent a lot of time talking about that. It appears inside the body as well as on the skin. Uh, we've moved on. We're talking melasma, dark spot. Melasma is Latin for dark spots. And we're talking melanin, pigment. And the difference between the formation of this lipofusion, which is really bad stuff, and the formation of melanin is that lipofusion is not supposed to occur. Lipofusion is a sign of defective drainage. Pigmentation is supposed to occur. Pigmentation is a protective mechanism. This is the difference. Lipofusion is waste. Pigmentation is protection. The skin is adjusting to the environment, and the pigment, when the skin pigments, it's supposed to be a protective response, protective especially to the sun. 
That's what pigment does, is it absorbs solar, solar energy. Black, dark absorbs things. That's why you don't wear a black t-shirt in the summertime, because the black will absorb the sun. Well, black in the skin also has an absorptive capacity, and, it, and the absorption of the sun's rays by the black pigment, by the melanin, is protective. That's called a tan. Unfortunately, as we get older, and when we're under duress, we pigment without the presence of the sun. Pigmentation is only supposed to occur when the skin gets affected by the sun. But as we get older, as we get sicker, as our body falls apart, as nutritional deficiencies accrue, as hormonal changes start to accumulate, we pigment without the sun. That's what hyperpigmentation is. That's what melasma is. It's a pigment response or a pigmentation response that is not linked to the sun. The question is, what is it linked to? That's how we address hyperpigmentation, by understanding why we're pigmenting without the sun, why we're darkening without the sun. And there's four major causes. And they're all related to one big umbrella cause, as always. We'll talk about that here in a sec. The four major causes of melasma or the hormone cortisol, the hormone estrogen, nutritional deficiencies, and occasionally some prescription drugs. Those are the major causes of melasma. Before we get into these causes, and we talk a lot about these, cortisol especially, there's a disease called Addison's disease, some of you may have heard of, which is a cortisol disease. And the classic manifestation of Addison's disease is hyperpigmentation. We talked yesterday about the mask of pregnancy. We talked about women who are on birth control pills or using hormone replacement therapy. Another classic way that pigmentation will occur. We'll spend some time talking about that as well. And of course, we'll talk about nutritional deficiencies, especially vitamin C deficiency, vitamin E deficiency. These are anti-pigmentation nutrients. And then we'll talk about some prescription drugs that can cause melasma or darkening. But before we get into these, I want to touch briefly on the distinction, a very important distinction, between melasma and melanoma. Melanoma is big time serious cancer, very serious cancer. Melasma is just pigmentation. Melasma is it's uniform in appearance, mostly, uniform in coloration. Melanoma, on the other hand, melanoma is not uniform. Melanoma is disorganized. It's kind of like lipofusion, but it will appear on the surface, higher up on the surface of the skin. And melanomas will suddenly appear. Melasmas will show up gradually over the course of time. Melanomas will appear all of a sudden, and melanomas will change dramatically and quickly. Melasmas don't change shape necessarily. They can get bigger, and they can get a little blotchier, but they don't really change shape dramatically. Melanomas will change shape. Doctors identify melanomas by using a diagnostic tool they call A, B, C, D, E. A refers to asymmetry. That is the weird shapes that melanomas take. If you have a pigment, if you have a, a, a pigment splotch and it's got this weird kind of disorganized shape, it's on the surface of the skin, that could potentially be a melanoma. B is for border. The border of melanomas are undefined and irregular. In, in melasma, you have a more even or rounded kind of border. C is for color. Melanomas have different shadings. Melanomas have different tones. They're, they're dark, they're black, but some of them can be kind of purplish or it can be lighter black, maybe even almost like brownish. And it will have different tones of black or different tones of dark within the same splotch. D is for diameter. Melanomas are larger than ordinary moles, and they're usually smaller than hyperpigmentation splotches. And E is for evolving as in changing shape. Melanomas will change shape on you. If any of these markers are observed, you could be dealing with cancer, and melanoma is a bad cancer. A, B, C, D, E. A for asymmetry, B for border, C for color, D for diameter, and E for evolving, as in changing shape. The most important consideration when it comes to melanoma is to recognize that melanoma is not a skin issue. It happens inside the body, too. I remember doing an a, a, a autopsy, not an autopsy, but a cadaver in pharmacy school. One of the things we had to do is go examine a cadaver. And uh, I'll tell you about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a commercial break and come back with more good health information. Don't go away. All 
right, welcome back to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 at the archive page on brightsideben.com. Also, pharmacist, also uh, benfuchsarchives.com, and you can search both of those pages. You can also check out my blog, pharmacistben.com, also criticalhealthnews.com, which we update regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. Thank you, Jaunty, and thank you, Robert, for setting those up. If you want to purchase any longevity products, you can do that right off the websites as well. And you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. If you want to help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, like the one designed by Dr. Wallach, we can help you. Call the Brightside Ben phone team, also 866-735-2470, if you like. All right. Our number today, 844-236-6010. We'll get to here momentarily. If you're on hold, hang tight. If we've left you on hold in the past, tell our call screener, and we'll get you to the front of the queue. Talking a little bit about melanoma and cancer. I remember uh, in pharmacy school, we had to do, as part of our curriculum, we had to examine a cadaver. We actually did, I did two cadavers. did a male and a female cadaver. The male was a farmer, and uh, he, when we cut him open... He had all of this melanoma inside his body. His whole, all of his organs were covered with melanoma spots. Now, clearly, clearly, there was no sun getting into his liver and his intestines and uh, the inner part of his body. That's all I needed to see to, to uh, explode that silly myth about the sun causing melanoma. Today, m doctors are even catching on, at least... Uh, non-mainstream physicians are catching on to the fact that melanoma is not necessarily a sun issue. In fact, you know, this is kind of a silly medical idea that connects a cause to cancer. The idea that something causes cancer is really not very biochemically intelligent. You know, we believe this the stuff that certain foods cause cancer. You read this. I get emails all the time, and you read this in, in the lay press. Something causes cancer. Foods, different foods cause cancer. The sun causes cancer. I've heard vitamins cause cancer. I was reading an article, and I wanted to save it, and I forgot to save it. I'll have to dig it out somewhere, dig it out uh, of my files, uh, that uh, supplements cause cancer. There's a physician who's claiming that supplements cause cancer. This is just crazy medical silliness to say that things cause cancer. And then it spreads fear around like, like manure growing a crop. It's not fair. Cancer cells are not caused by the sun. They're not caused by supplements. They're not caused by tobacco or foods or viruses or anything else. It's this targeting of causes of cancer that's behind the misunderstandings of how to prevent the disease. What we call cancer is really cancer cells. Cancer is a disease that has been named by the medical model, but really cancer is cancer cells. Remember, all disease is cell disease. Cancer is no different. Doctors will tell you there's lots of different cancers. This is, this is the medical dogma. Oh, there's lots of different cancers. And they'll even tell you it's all different diseases. The medical dogma says that all the cancers are different. They're all different diseases. And it's all got different manifestations of biology and different chemistries. So just like we always say on this program, the only people who care about specialty diseases are specialists. Cancer is a generic disease like all diseases are. From a symptom level, it may look like it's a different disease, whether it's breast cancer or lung cancer or stomach cancer or whatever. Cancer may look like a different disease, but from a cell perspective, it's all the same thing. All disease is cell disease and cancer is no different. What is the cause of cell disease? Starvation, suffocation, toxification, which results in a barricading or protective response called inflammation. And that leads to more starvation, suffocation, and toxification, which leads to more inflammation, which leads to more suffocation, starvation, suffocation, which leads to more inflammation. That's it. That's it. If you just remember suffocation, starvation, toxification, and inflammation, you've got all diseases. You've now eliminated any the, the necessity for a medical professional. It's the same dynamic that is behind all, and I repeat, all degenerative disease, diseases that do, do not heal. That's what a degenerative disease is, and then that's the bulk of our health care problems in this country are degenerative diseases. Cancer is a degenerative disease. These are diseases that just get progressively worse. A cancer cell is a stressed-out cell. That's it. 
It's a cell that has been starved, a cell that has been suffocated, a cell that has been toxified with sugar. Sugar is a toxin and carbon dioxide, or carbon dioxide and acidity for a long period of time. It doesn't know what else to do. It's at its wit's end. That's what a cancer cell is, a cell that is at its wit's end. It's not caused by alcohol or tobacco or obesity. or It's not caused by these things. Cancer isn't. A cancer cell is a result of a stressed out cell. It doesn't know how to get what it needs in terms of energy because it's been starved and suffocated and toxic. And so what it does is it starts to divide rapidly. Cancer cells are cells that are dividing in an out of control, rapid fashion. Too rapid to be functional. A cell, cancer cell is not functional. It's just gone nuts because it doesn't know how else to survive. It's a survival mechanism. And by the way, the more fuel a cancer cell has in the form of sugar, the faster it's going to divide. And the less oxygen it has and the more toxicity it has, the more stressed out it's going to be. You add nutritional deficiencies to the mix and you have a biological environment. That's the key right there, guys. A biological environment that is the triggering factor to cancer. It's not the tobacco necessarily and it's not the sun and it's not all these factors, the foods and the supplements. It's the environment that the cell is sitting in. And the cell is reading the environment and it's saying, well, I'm not getting fed. I'm not getting oxygen. I'm toxic. The only way I can survive is to divide really, really rapidly. Theoretically, theoretically, you can smoke all the cigarettes you want. But if you have all the nutrients you need, all the oxygen you need, if the cells have all the nutrients they need, lung cells, and the lung cells have all the oxygen they need, and the lung cells uh, can detoxify, they're not going to get cancerous. And you can smoke all you want. Now, obviously, if you're smoking, you're going to be depriving your body, your cells of nutrients. They're not going to be get the nutrition's not going to be able to get through the smoke. You'll be depriving the cells of oxygen, and the cells will become toxic. But from a theoretical standpoint, it's not the smoke. It's the lack of nutrition, the lack of oxygen, and the lack of detoxification. If you're smoking, cells are going to have a problem. I'm not saying to go out and smoke, but I'm telling you, it's not the smoke directly. It's the lack of nutrition, the lack of oxygen, and the toxicity. And why is this important? Because it places control for our disease or of our disease back in our laps where it belongs. We become responsible for our health or lack thereof. If we believe it's some external factor, not only are we going to lose our God-given ability to control our health, but even worse, we're going to start to rely on this red herring advice like staying out of the sun to protect ourselves from melanoma, which occur inside the body and on the bottoms of the feet and in areas that don't even see the sun. Or we're going to think that the supplements may cause cancer. Beta carotene, I read that. That may cause cancer. Beta carotene supplements. Or we will think that killing ourselves, which is what chemotherapy is, killing ourselves is somehow the solution. Or radiation or surgery. Doctors will tell you that DNA is damaged in cancer cells. No, it's not damaged. It's just different. It's trying to make it. It's trying to survive, like all of us. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. There's so much more to say about cancer, melanoma, melanin. We'll probably have to hold off until our next episode. We'll take your calls when we come back. 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're coming back. are back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. Hang tight. 844-236-6010 is our number. And we do have a couple lines open for you. We're talking about melanoma and melanin and skin pigmentation. I didn't want to digress too much on cancer, but it is obviously a, a serious problem. There's probably, I don't know, maybe 10 million people who are affected by cancer every year in this country, which is a statement right there. You, know, you hear about cancer all the time, cancer awareness and cancer protection, etc. Cancer rates really haven't changed all that much, and we still get as much cancer as we did 50 years ago before we had our war on cancer and trillions of dollars. So clearly there's something wrong here. I would present that what's wrong is we don't understand what the stuff is. We're treating it the wrong way. We, we, all under, we understand it if we go, if we become logical, but if we try to treat it as if it was one of thousands of different diseases, it's not going to work. Melanoma, like all cancers, is caused by stressed out cells, period. 
It's not the sun per se, although the sun may act as a stressor. Cigarettes may act as a stressor. Obesity, alcohol, drugs, certain foods, sugar, they may act as stressors, but they're not the cause. The cause is a cell that's burnt out. As far as melanoma goes, according to Dr. Sam Schuster, honorary consultant at Norfolk and Norwich University Hospital in the UK and a dermatologist, quote, there is no proof that ultraviolet light exposure is a significant cause of malignant melanoma. If the sun were important, we'd expect sunscreen, this is a quote from him, if the sun were important, we'd expect sunscreen to decrease the incidence of melanoma over the years as more and more people are using sunscreen, but that hasn't happened. Melanoma has actually increased. Dr. Schuster continues to say that 75% of cases occur on unexposed sites, especially on the feet. Melanoma occurrence decreases. This is from Dr. Schuster. This isn't me. This is a dermatologist and, and medical researcher. Melanoma occurrence decreases with greater sun exposure. Did you hear that? Decreases with greater sun exposure. Oh, it gets better. Listen to this. And increases with sunscreens. The sunscreens, according to Dr. Schuster and lots of other folks, the sunscreens cause an increase in melanoma. And Dr. Schuster concludes, causative effect of ultraviolet light on melanoma can only be minimal. According to Shane Ellison, author of Over the Counter Natural Cures Expanded, check this out. As you travel from uh, the North Pole to the equator, you, UV exposure increases by a whopping 5,000%. And at the same time, there's a decrease in the rates of malignant melanoma who live in regions of strong UVB exposure. You guys, they didn't have melanoma in New Guinea 150 years ago when they were living out in the, in the South Pacific. It only happened when they started to participate in the Western lifestyle, like all cancers. The idea that something outside of us causes cancer is disempowering to us and empowering to medical authorities and professionals who profit on our misery. And it's not fair. It's not right. To protect yourself from any cancer, including skin cancer, you do the same things that you do to protect yourself from anything. You feed your cells, you uh, avoid toxicity, and that includes sugar, and you make sure your cells have all the oxygen they need to do their business. Cancer cannot survive oxygen, period. All right, so much more to say. We'll talk about melanin, uh, pigmentation, hyperpigmentation, ways you can avoid hyperpigmentation, dark spots, which are an unfortunate cosmetic uh, issue that many people de deal with. Uh, I'll touch on a little, say a little bit more about melanoma on our next episode, and then we'll, then we'll hit some of the uh, causes and some of the remedies, some of the ways you can address anyway, hyperpigmentation or melasma. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Welcome and good morning, Bruce in Kansas. What's going on? Again, I've got this rash that comes and goes, and it's on my big toe and it spreads across the top of my toes. It doesn't get in between them. I've been to my doctor over the last two years. Hey, they can't that do anything for that. They, they, there's nothing they can do about that here. Uh, can you talk, speak into the, into the phone or, or get me off speaker or something because yeah. I'm having a hard time hearing you. But here's the deal. When you have a rash on the skin, by definition, you have a defensive response a protective response, an immune system response is what it's called. You can tell this, you can prove this to yourself by the, by the, the prescription drugs they give you for the rashes. The prescription remedy, the prescription approach, the medical approach, the dermatological approach to rashes on the skin is to shut down the immune system with hydrocortisone or a derivative or something similar. They have fancier hydrocortisone, but it's the same idea. Hydrocortisone suppresses the immune system. It quiets down the immune system. Thus, when you quiet down the immune system, you end up, your rash goes away. So what does that tell you? It tells you that the dermatitis is an, a defensive response. It's an immune response. Now me, not being as smart as a doctor, not being as brilliant as a medical professional, I think, well, if you have a defensive response in my stupid way, I just say, well, maybe there's an offending agent. I'm not as smart as a doctor. I'm not as brilliant. So I say, well, if there's a defensive response, Maybe there's an offending agent. You know, that's my, just my silly way of doing it, but it works. I'm not, as, I'm not as smart as your doctor, as your dermatologist. He went to medical school. But my, my like, dumb kind of way of doing it, my average person kind of way of thinking about it is, well, if you have a dermatitis and it's a defensive response, maybe there's an offending agent. 
Hmm. Well, how could there be an offending agent? Well, offending agents get into the body through the blood or, or part of the blood, and they get into the blood through basically 99% of the time through the digestive system. So maybe it has something to do with something we're eating. I wonder, could it be that, Bruce, my friend, do you have any food allergies, food intolerances, digestive issues? Do you have a history of digestive issues? Anything along those lines ring a bell? I don't, I don't really think so. The only time I have digestive issues, in other, in other words, stomach problems, is when I drink too much. And Th that's not a digestive that's, issue. That's a toxicity issue when you drink too much. Yes. That's a whole different ballgame. You can't have an immune system reaction without the immune system being activated. There's two main centers of the immune system, one really main center, and that's the digestive tract. The second center is the skin. You, you follow me, Bruce? So if you have an immune reaction, by definition, literally, you have a digestive condition because the immune system is housed, it's located, it lives in the digestive tract. You make sense, my friend? It's much more possible. Hang on, hang on, bro. Hang on, bro. Hang on, hang on, hang on, Bruce. It's much more likely that you're missing it because we miss it. The things happen, and we don't even really know what a digestive symptom is. So you got to go and, and really become vigilant and watch your digestive, hab, uh, digestive system responses, diarrhea, constipation, bloating, gas, heartburn, loose stools, uh, discomfort of any kind along the digestive tract, and probe. Be like a hunter hunting a jaguar. Look for it. Stalk it. Look, be, be a scientist. You've got to find it because it's in your digestive tract, your immune system. So it's got to be a digestive problem. Now, occasionally it can be a topical thing. But if it's just on the big toe, which is located, you know, it's, it's pretty difficult for it to be a topical thing if it's just on your big toe or on your toe somewhere. So chances are really good. Hang on. Let me just finish, bro. Chances are pretty good it's a digestive issue. And the way you can prove it to yourself is to fast for a couple of days and watch what happens to the rash. You also probably want to take some supplements that will help protect the digestive system and also some skin supplements. Sometimes when you're deficient in nutrients, the immune system becomes a little bit more sensitized. So hang tight, I'll give you some strategies, some nutritional strategies here when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Back on The Bright Side, I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Check this out here. Could body posture during sleep affect how your brain clears waste? Do you know that when you lay on your side, your brain clears out waste, your whole nervous system actually clears out waste out of its own personal lymphatic system. Your brain and your nervous system have their own lymphatic system. It's called the glymphatic system. And it's a drainage system for wastes out of the brain and the central nervous system. Well, when you lay on your side, when you sleep, at least according to this article, you actually clear waste better. That's like a fetal position. We clear waste out of our brain when we're in a fetal position because when we're in a fetal position, we activate our parasympathetic nervous system. That's why people go into a fetal position. It activates the relaxation response. Well, activating the relaxation response, the parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system, the relaxation nervous system improves drainage out of the lymph and also out of the glymph, G-L-Y-M-P-H, glymph, that's your central nervous system and brain drainage system. So if you're dealing with Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, movement disorders, brain health issues, understanding how to clear out waste is going to be a very important strategy. And one of the best ways to do that, or a good way to do that, at least according to Dr. Benveniste, Dr. Uh, Dr. Helene Benveniste, writing in the Journal of Neuroscience, laying on your side improves drainage out of the brain and the central, drainage of waste out of the brain and central nervous system. All right, we're talking to Bruce in Kansas about dermatitis. Bruce, you cannot have a problem just on your big toe unless you're rubbing something on it topically, which you're probably not doing. It doesn't make any sense that you just have a problem on your, does it make sense to you that you would only have a problem on your big toe? As a logician, no. uh, of course not. It doesn't I make any sense. sweat a lot. Okay, now you're talking. Sweat is a sign that the body's trying to get rid of toxicity. Sweat is a sign when you're, it's called hyper, meaning too much, hydresis, sweat. Hyperhydresis, too much sweat, is a sign that the body's trying to eliminate toxicity. You clearly have something in your blood that shouldn't be there, period. 
Okay, Bruce? How do things get into the blood? Are you a heroin user? Are you injecting crack or speed or, or no. okay, so then you're not injecting anything into your blood, right? So how else are things, is anything going to get into your blood? You're eating it. Now, if you eat something and it's showing up on your skin, chances are that you're also going to have some digestive symptomology. Look for it. Do a food diary or fast for a couple of days and then reintroduce foods back into your diet. And you'll notice that the dermatitis calms down when you're not eating and it flares up when you are. Then there's supplements that are very helpful for the digestive system. Of course, probiotics are the best and the most important. Get on the BioLumin Nightly Essence, three in the morning, three at night. That alone might make a difference. Eat fermented foods. Use apple cider vinegar after your meals. Use the ultimate enzymes after your meals. And when the body and the skin particularly doesn't have enough essential fatty acids, it becomes more sensitized. So using your ultimate EFAs can help. Of course, if you have a liver problem, gallbladder problem, intestinal problem, which chances are pretty good you do, you may not be absorbing your fats as effectively. So when you're taking your ultimate EFAs, take them with some ultimate enzymes, take them with some apple cider vinegar, and take them with some food. Between your uh, healthy start pack your ultimate EFAs, digestive enzymes, apple cider vinegar, uh, the BioLumin Nightly Essence and probiotics and fermented foods, etc., and perhaps fasting or, or like trying to find problem foods, associating foods with, with symptomology, digestive symptoms, and eliminating those foods, your dermatitis should go away. Dermatitis equals immunity equals blood equals digestion, and that's pretty much it, my friend. Uh, if topically, if you really want to get rid of it topically, you can use steroid creams, but that's not going to take care of the problem. And the sweating, by the way, uh, because it's a sign of toxicity, once you start to control your digestive symptomology, the sweating symptomology, the sweating symptoms will start to subside as well. Thanks for your call, Bruce. I appreciate it. Uh, let's, uh, Wes in Idaho, what's going on? How you doing, buddy? Hello, Ben. Hello, my friend. And reading about ozone therapy, how it's used in Europe and Russia and Cuba, okay. uh, I'm not talking just about autoimmune or autohemotherapy, which I guess is against the law in USA, uh, making water and encephalations uh with a stethoscope, I guess, and it can be put into your ear. So what's your comment on O3 or O3? O3. Here's the operative, the operative part, the most important part of O3, O, oxygen. And as we've said so, so many times, and we said it ad, ad nauseum today, Oxygen or lack of oxygen is one of the three main points of disease. Uh, lack of oxygen, that is suffocation, accumulation of toxicity, that is toxification, and a lack of nutrition, that is starvation. Starvation, toxification, suffocation, leading to inflammation, period. That's it, you guys. That's the cause of all disease. Wes, ozone therapy is oxygen. It's a way of driving oxygen into the system. And it does a lot of things. First of all, it has oxygenation powers, but also oxygen is antiseptic and antibacterial. It also speeds healing. So ozone therapy has multiple benefits, and it's a great idea. And, and I'm a big believer in ozone therapy, especially for wound healing. But also, for if, you, if you're dealing with cancer, driving oxygen into your body is a great, great strategy. Uh, as I said, cancer can't survive oxygen. Thank you so much for your call, Wes. Appreciate it. Okay, we got AJ in Indiana from yesterday. AJ, you were talking about your nails, I believe, correct? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So you got spots on your nails. Is it in the nail itself, or is it in the bed, in the skin underneath? The... Darkness in below. I think it's I... below. Yeah, that's a, that's a, and I'm assuming you didn't wound yourself. You didn't drop something on your oh, nail. No. Some, okay. That's a circulatory problem, and it could be due to a couple things. It could be due to blood pressure issues, and it could be due to a weakness in the blood vessels. So as we were talking with our caller from Kansas with the dermatitis, you got to look for other symptoms. Okay, AJ? You don't just have, nobody just has uh, a purpling or darkening in the nail bed. There's got to be other things going on. How old are you? Uh, 62. I think you said something about heart issues yesterday. Did you say that? Well, I don't think I have anything in problem with my heart and stuff, you know. Uh, uh, it's yeah. something I think what I'm getting in, I had some other friends tell me that it's low in oxygen and getting into those areas. When I checked it out, I was very, very, very low. Say, low in oxygen, did you say? Oxygen in my blood. That Absolutely. Hurts. That's what we were just talking about. Uh, lack of oxygen in the blood will cause defects in the vasculature in the, in the vessels. 
and that can definitely be a problem. It will also cause a problem with the circulation. It will cause a, a rise in the pressure of the blood. The blood will become clotted and coagulated. The heart will have to work harder. Yes, oxygenation is a big issue, and it could very well be related to that, but it more than likely is in addition to the oxygen or, or as a cause of the problems with oxygen, you have a circulatory problem. So if you're 62 and you're living in the United States of America, the chances are really good that you got a circulatory problem because of the way we live our lives. So here's what you should do. If you, this is what I would do. Number one, get on the Healthy Start Pack. That goes without saying. You need your Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. That's the first step. The second thing you want to do is start to practice your deep breathing techniques. That is sitting on the couch, slow deep breathing, 15 seconds in, 15 seconds out, and doing it through the nose, in through the nose, out through the nose, slowly for two or three minutes. That, uh, two or three minutes a day at least. If you can do it twice or three times, that's great. If you can do it in the middle of the day when you're waiting in line somewhere or you're, or you're sitting in your car, that will just improve oxygenation, slow deep breathing, and will also improve uh, detoxification because you'll be blowing off toxicity. And then the, uh, the third thing you want to do is start to move. Move your circulatory system. Move the blood. Move the lymph. Get on a rebounder or a treadmill or, or even oh, just yeah. taking brisk, brisk walks, some kind of movement. And then the last thing you want to do, again, because you're 62 and you're living in the U.S. of A., you want to focus on blood sugar issues. Nothing will whack out your circulatory system faster, with, with the possible exception of crappy food and, and lack of oxygen, than... Uh, sugar. So keeping your sugar intake down, looking for other symptoms of poor sugar control is another strategy. If you're gaining weight around the middle of your body where you didn't gain weight before, if your blood pressure is starting to go off, uh, if you have sugar cravings, all of these are signs that you're not processing sugar correctly. And again, it's very likely that that's the case. You'll want to use the Sweeties as well as the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and restrict your intake of sugar too. Now, as far as directly supporting so let me just say a couple more things here. If you, can, if you want to directly affect the vasculature, vitamin C is probably the most important blood vessel strengthening nutrient, and also protein is very important, making sure you're digesting your protein, using bone soup to get your protein, chicken soup with bones to get your protein. That can help. Also, uh, the cartilage factors that are found in the, in the uh, chicken bones and also in the glucogel caps can help strengthen the blood vessels. What did you want to say, AJ? I'm taking uh, the, the glucogel plus. I'm trying to take about three ounces a day throughout the day. I would do the capsules. You get a little more bang for your buck, and it's a little more value uh, if you use the capsules. Three in the morning, three at night, and if you want to do nine a day, that would be great as well. Lots more you can do, but focus on the circulatory system and the heart. Oxygen is definitely an issue, and also restricting your blood sugar. If you have any digestive problems, that goes without saying that you got to eliminate problem foods, and sometimes probiotics and digestive enzymes and apple cider vinegar will help there too. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out my websites, pharmacistben.com, Critical Health News com and brightsideben.com if you want to purchase any of our skin health products go to truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com we'll talk to y'all later folks bye for now